Good morning, everybody. Look what we got here. We have a servo drive, a servo motor, and the cables. <laughs> that never happens. What in the world? This is my lucky day. <laughs> what we got here is the Cole Morgan Servo Star CD. That's the servo drive over there. It is model CE6250 2G306B1. The servo motor is a Cole Morgan Gold Line XT. Model number MT306 B1 E1 C1. Let's go over here and make this thing go. Now at the end of the video, I'll show you all the connections to make this drive run that motor. Let's go. Now this drive comes up three in the display. When I enable that motor to run, the decimal point turns on. So you got three decimal points. I'm changing speed and direction with this potentiometer. I've got the wings of the potentiometer set to plus and minus 10 volts and we're swinging around that. There's something. Let me go get the oscilloscope and we'll take a look at those waveforms that run that servo motor. Alright, we've enabled the motor to run. Let's look at MA and MB. MA and MC. Here's MB and MC. They should all look the same. Let me slow it down a little bit there. Nice, nice. That's a smooth running servo motor right there. Evening everybody. We got to hurry up. We ain't got but a couple more hours before that sun's down. <laughs> I wish I could get my days back. You know, when you're young, a day will last 20 years. And when you get to be about my age and a little bit older, the days go by in seconds and you want every little bit of time back that you can get if you could. <laughs> it don't work like that. Once it's gone, it's gone. You don't get no time back. <laughs> Come on. Oh, people, quit talking about how close you are to death. <laughs> Let's talk about this drive right here. Okay, so to run this drive, in servo mode of course 
you need two power supplies right here. Let's talk about this first one up here. This first external DC power supply set to plus and minus 10 volts DC is used for the analog speed reference input to that drive on pins 2 and 3. Analog in minus is on 3 and analog in plus is on pin 2. These voltages right here go into an operational amplifier to tell that drive which direction to run clockwise, counterclockwise, or how fast to run, uh, slow or fast. So I always like to take the analog in plus here on pin 2 of the C3 connector and tie it to ground. And then here, analog in minus on pin 3 goes to the wiper of a potentiometer. The wings of the potentiometer go to the red plus 10 volts DC and the yellow minus 10 volts DC of that external power supply. The black terminal is on ground. And that gives us our speed and direction. Now down here, we have another power supply. It's an external DC power supply set to plus 24 volts DC. This is going into the optocouplers inside that drive. We need to put plus 24 volts input on pin 7 of the C3 connector. Our enable switch to make that drive run, that servo motor, is on pin 8. That's a dedicated enable input. These other three inputs right here, 9, 10, and 11, in, in 2, and in 3, they're programmable. But I've never seen uh, uh, C3 pins 9 and 10 that weren't programmed for the limits. We have a clockwise limit on pin 9, we have a counterclockwise limit on pin 10. You have to make those, you have to pull those to ground. Otherwise the drive won't run. So, right here is all I need to run that servo motor. Now let's go down to uh, the motor itself, the motor connections itself. Here's the front panel connector. The servo motor, the Cole Morgan model MT306B1-E1C1 connects to MA, MB, and MC. The line voltage, and you have a choice here. This is really nice. I like this. You have a choice between 115 volts AC, single phase, going to L1 and L2 or 230 volts AC three phase going to L1, L2 and L3. That's nice right there. The B plus and C those are for the regenerative braking resistor and I'm not going to jerk this motor around real hard to where I need to have a regenerative braking resistor connected to B plus see. B plus is your uh, plus bus connection uh, to the bus capacitors and C is the collector of the regenerative braking transistor inside that drive. There you go. <laughs> that's our that's our control and motor connections. Now we got to talk about one more thing. Let me move back up to the data sheet of this drive and I'll show you what I mean. Now over here on the C2 connector of the drive is the feedback connector. Now we don't have to worry about that because we had a cable. The cable works all this out for you. When you got a cable for the feedback connector and a cable for the motor, oh, it's wonderful. 
But when I tell you what, when I make that other video of where I had to hook up uh, my Hall Effect encoder simulator to this drive, we'll go into more detail on this connector right here. <laughs> okay, okay, folks. I really appreciate it when you come over. We'll see you next time. <laughs>